Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's so wonderful to be here with you today. I am really excited for this episode. Uh, this one is called Setting Yourself Up for Success. So all of us go through a lot of hard things in our lives. And there's, you know, ups and there's downs and there's backs and there's forests and all of the things in between. And it really is hard sometimes to, to know where to begin, especially after losing something great, something big. But sometimes, like we talk a lot about the, the big things in life, but, but we don't always talk about the, the little things, like the little minor setbacks that we have. And how do we start going to that next level? How do we set ourselves up so even when those things happen, we have somewhere to fall back on. And, you know, that's something that, that I struggle with. I'm, I'm a, I feel like I'm a constant work in progress. Like there's always something that I'm trying to do, that I'm trying to be better, that I'm trying to make so it's, um, so, so, I can, so I can be the best version of me. And I can promise you that I don't always succeed at that. Um, <laughs> and that's where, you know, I, I, I start to get frustrated with myself. I start to get a, frustrated with my surroundings and I feel like I have to start over. And this is the mindset that I am trying really hard to break because once we say we have to start over, we feel like we're starting from scratch that we don't have. We forget that we have all of the other things that has brought us to where, to where we are. And, and that's really important to, to think about and to remember is that we've come this far with our setbacks, with our losses, with everything else that we're doing. We're already here. We've gotten here because of that. So I don't like the idea of starting over rather than pushing through or picking up where you left off or going to the next level. However it is that is good for you to, to hear and the perspective that you need to, to have to make you feel like you've already succeeded up till now. That is already a success. Now it's starting you know, the next, going to the next level. And, and I really like thinking about it like that because I mean, life isn't somewhere that you can just, it's not something that you can just like walk through with, with no issues, with no flaws, with, with no trials or failures or anything like that. Like that is not why we're here on this planet. We're not here on this planet because we are meant to be perfect. We are all imperfect beings. We're perfectly imperfect. Um, I have a, a friend who, or an acquaintance that I know that, that sings, that um, writes this song, it's called Perfectly Imperfect. I'll, I'll actually, um, on the, the recorded video, I'll have it in the, in the notes and comments, or you can, you can reach out to me and um, ask me where that song is because I love the song. But um, it's, we're, that's what we're meant to do. Like even, even babies, even, you know, they're these perfect little creatures that we have now that we get to, to help raise. I mean, when they're learning to walk, it's not like, you know, they just stand up one day and start walking and, you know, you learn how to crawl, you learn. And even when you're crawling, you, you fall and you get back up, you fall and you get back up. And babies are a great example of like how to keep going because you know that eventually they're going to succeed. And even when they have, you know, those, their, their elements that they can have or, or things that, that don't take them as quickly into the, the next phase that is normal, um, we still see them as these perfect beings. I, one of my dearest friends has a son who had a, a terrible thing happen and the story is in my book but she almost lost him when she was a baby and to this day he he struggles with walking but we still celebrate those moments where he does get up and he uses his his walking um he's, he's got these little walking sticks that he uses and um you know we celebrate those moments we all have our own path 
that doesn't mean he's any less than my kids that are are walking that are the same age and or you know doing other things because he also has these amazing abilities where he can you know he's he can sing and he knows music and and like all of these things that are so beautiful about him and that's what we celebrate but we can do that with other people so much or children or our friends you know we see them struggling and we're like you can do it like there's you know, you're, you're just don't give up, just keep going. And we say that to other people way more than we say that to ourselves. And, you know, we, we sit there and we beat ourselves up for these things all the time where, you know, we, we should have done better. We could have done better. Um, why did I get to the place that, that I am now? How did I get here? And, you know, I'm trying everything and I can't lose the weight or I can't, you know, get into this routine that I want to because life keeps throwing these things at me that's okay to not be perfect in our goals in our you know what we want to do to to feel like we've succeeded and it's it's getting to that place where where we understand that our failures are just part of the process my my friend and business associate um she keeps reminding me progress over perfection that's like our our thing right now is is progress over perfection and i want this to be so ingrained in me and the people that i surround myself with that that's what we're always reminding ourselves of i know that i need that reminder way more than than i let on sometimes <laughs> um because i mean we have we have these moments where we have these big goals and we can look at them and we're we can sit there and we're, you know, tell ourselves this, you know, I want to lose 40 pounds. I want to be able to, you know, hike all the way up to the top of the mountain. I want to be able to swim across this lake. I want to be able to, you know, whatever it is, I, I want to be able to open my own business and, and make a hundred thousand dollars next year. I want to do all of these things. Those are all amazing goals. But they're also very overwhelming and we so often look at our goals and say how how can i get there like that's not that that seems so out of my my league that seems so out of my reach um and and honestly i mean if you wanted like do that tomorrow yeah it is out of your reach that's not going to happen tomorrow but what's going to happen tomorrow is the way you set yourself up for that success. What is it that you need to do to take you to the next step? Not the next goal, the next step. What do these steps look like for you? And there's, I, I have a friend who, who wrote this book. His name is Chris. It's a great book. Creating Your Dreams by Christopher Doris. So this is a great book that, that I have found that really breaks down what you need to do to take those next steps. And um, I, I've done this in the past, but I love the way that he breaks it down because it truly is write down what you want, write down your biggest goals, your biggest dreams, your biggest fantasies, everything that you wish that you want. I want to be able to cruise across the ocean in, you know, in this amazing boat. And I want to be able to do this and, you know, go to Bora Bora or wherever it is. What is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to, to have in your life that you can say that you've done? Write down the biggest ones. And then start breaking it down. Break it down into bite-sized chunks where you can, so, so you start big and then you start going backwards. And each time you go backwards, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where you can take that first step. What action step are you gonna take today that, will take you to the next that get you a little bit closer to your goal so let's say that you do want to have a, a boat and travel around the world what is it that you are going to need 
Well, first of all, you're going to need a lot of money. Second of all, you're going to need the equipment. You're going to need all of these things. And so you start, you know, breaking it down, making your list, and then going to the next step or that first step. You get all the way down. Well, the first thing that I have to do is maybe it's go to work that day. Maybe it's, you know, do the next level of your business. Put something out there into the universe that says, I'm working towards my goal. Let me break it down a little bit more realistic for us. Let's do, let's say that we want to lose 40 pounds. Um, I don't like to use the the word anymore, lose weight. I've actually gotten to a point in my life where I don't, for me, and this doesn't necessarily mean everybody else, because a lot of times a scale is a tool. That's what it's meant to be. That's what it's meant to, to be for, for us. Like a scale is, is, is a tool for our health and to monitor our weight and all that stuff. Well, I got to a point where I was super obsessed with it. And um, if I stood on the scale and it was a higher number than I wanted it to be, it would ruin my entire day. It would become, it became more of a, of a bad thing than a good thing. It was more of a, I, I started to get more discouraged with it than I did without it. So not too long ago, I decided to do it differently this time. I've tried every diet on the planet. I've done all of these things. I've lost a lot of weight and I've gained a lot of weight back and I've, I've gone up and down and around and around, but that scale has always been my vice. So one day I decided I was going to throw it out. Now, mind you, this is a journey that I've taken for many years of my adult life. And so um, I don't expect myself to be completely okay with, um, with all of this. And I don't know how to get my mind in a place where I don't need that number to keep going. So, um, but I decided I was going to do it anyway, because we don't know what we're going to do until we actually do it. So I threw away my scale and then I even went to the next level and got rid of all my clothes that I called my skinny clothes. And because I was sick of having that moment where you put on something and it doesn't fit, or, you know, I've, I've had this in my closet for three years. I used to fit into them and now I don't anymore. And so I'm going to put it on. I'm going to be really mad. I'm going to beat myself up because I'm still not at that place where I feel comfortable in these jeans. Okay. Well, get rid of them then. That's what I did. Got rid of them. And that doesn't mean I'm giving up. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to continue on my health journey and I want to be fit. I want to have these certain things in, in my life. And, and I, I like the way my body looks when it's a certain, when it's a certain weight and as you know, I fit into certain clothes. I like that about myself. However, I don't like beating myself up for it anymore. So that was my first step of mind, my mindset was get rid of the things that make me feel bad about myself. First step, done. I did it. I told myself I'm worth who I am right now because where I'm, where I'm at is where I've been able to work really hard to get to. And it hasn't been with my weight journey. It's been other things that have made me successful right now. It has made me feel good about myself right now. Other things. That was the next thing I did. Okay, so these are the things that I don't like about myself or that I, I shouldn't say it that way, but that's in my mind, that's what I needed to do. So these are the things that I'm, I'm talking negatively about myself on. And I wrote them down. These are the things that I'm proud of myself of doing. So I wrote them down. And honestly, the things that I'm proud of myself for doing were bigger. That list was bigger than the things that I was mad at myself for not doing or being or whatever. Negative self-talk was on this side. Positive self-talk was on this side. And every day I started telling myself the things that I liked about myself and specifically the things that I liked about my body because this is a big thing for me. And I know as women who were my 
my biggest audience right now, as women, we are really good at looking at ourselves and saying, oh, I don't like this. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, my body's changing, especially after when you're over 40. And I'm over 40 now. So, you know, there's a lot of things in my body that's changing. I can't just go to the gym for a month and lose the weight or, or get into the genes that I wanted to do. I can't do that anymore. And that was like way long ago. I mean, I've had three babies at this point I've had, and that's the, the last of the babies I'm having, but <laughs> I've had three babies. I've gone through a lot of trauma. I've had massive amounts of stress. I've done these things in my life that, that my body has taken me through. So I now thank my body every day for something. I can always find something to be grateful for my body about. And it, sometimes it's as, as small as, you know, thanks for letting me wake up this morning and get out of bed. Good for you, body. You've done it. And it's really powerful. And I started watching myself transform in my mind through the mirror. And it was, it was really interesting because I would look at myself and I'd be like, you know, yeah, you have a little bit of a little bit more fluff as, as my mom and I like to call it <laughs> a little bit more fluff around your stomach than you, than you used to, but that's okay. Because honestly, like it's still yours and it's still mine. And it still has brought me to this point in my life where I get to honor that. And I now am allowing myself to release that because a lot of our times, our body thinks that we need that protection, right? We have this protection that, that our body needs to give us. So when we're going through a lot of hard things, we hold on to weight because that's our body saying, I've got you, I've got you, I've got you. So now I'm telling my body, thank you for having me through this. And now I have you and I have myself so I can release that. That's another step I've taken. So that's three things now that I've done baby steps in my mind. And it hasn't been one day after another, after another, after another, all of a sudden, wow, there's the 40 pounds gone. That's not how it worked or it's how it's working. Cause I'm still, this, this isn't something that's going to like all of a sudden transform in one day, bing, you're going to be there. It's a daily process. It's going to take time and you have to allow yourself to take that time. It's the little things that you do to set yourself up for success that truly makes it a, a difference. And it's not just, oh, I'm gonna work out every day. Oh, I'm gonna work out every day. You have to also have your mind in it and your spirit and your soul in it. It's called balance. It's this balance that we need. So the little things that you do to set yourself up for success are super important. It might be different for you than it is for me. It might be going and getting up and saying, I'm going to go to the gym today and, and doing that. It, that's what it might be. And for me, obviously, like, yes, I am starting a workout routine. I am, I do find my community of support. I have some, some girlfriends that we're all the same age and we are all in this phase where we're like, our bodies are changing. It's not like it used to be. So what are we going to do together? to keep us motivated, to, to be able to be that cheerleader for each other. And, and so what we're, we're actually going to do, we're going to do a challenge together, but we'd also define what that looks like. And doing this, this challenge for us is, is motivating, but it's not such a, a out of reach challenge. It's more of focusing on those behaviors, focusing on the behaviors, like the talking to yourself nicely in the mirror every day, that will get you to the next level. Exercise, even if it's going for a 15 minute walk, is that like, that might be what it is for you. Um, if, if you are like me right now, where I'm at, I've found that my body really responds well to weights. And now that I don't have a scale to tell me, oh, you're, you're not losing weight because when you lift weights, you actually, it takes longer to lose weight. But now that I don't have that scale bossing me around and saying I'm not doing enough, I am able to lift weights and already start to see changes in my body. 
and my body is responding really well to it. And it's not just because I'm doing the weights, but it's also because of my mental self-talk that's been really powerful. So when we wanna set ourselves up for success, we need to do it one step at a time. We need to be kind to ourselves. We need to give ourselves grace and we need to allow ourselves those days where we're like, I don't want to do anything because maybe that is what your body needs. Do you know that, that rest days uh, and days that you just take and be lazy even are just as important and just as valuable as anything else? And I had to learn that because I am not a person who, who does well when I'm lazy. I, I don't like, I can even be like productively unproductive <laughs> and still feel like I'm doing something like I'm, I'm constantly go, 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 go. But I've learned in the last, and, and honestly, when 2020 happened and we were forced to stay home and do all of those things, that actually is what taught me it's okay to slow down. It's okay to take a step back and it's okay to just be because so many times less is more. And that's a, a lesson that I, I've learned in my life that I'm really grateful for, that less is more 90% of the time. I'm not gonna say all the time, but a good chunk of the time because it's, again, what have you done to set yourself up for success? And have you started right now? You can do something right now after this, after you watch this <laughs> to move towards your goal. Maybe it is going for a walk. Maybe you want to, you know, have a business and you want to, to make a hundred thousand dollars in the next three to five years. What are you going to do today to get that going? Well, maybe just write it down, write down. My plan is to make a hundred thousand dollars in the next three years. Be specific. Take 10 minutes every day to write about it and then do something else. So then you take, you know, so for a week or for two weeks, I'm going to write down every day what I want. And then I'm going to write down while I'm writing down, you know, what I want, what it is that I need to get there. What's going to motivate me to keep going? Maybe you find someone that, that motivates you on a daily basis. Maybe it's taking a class. Maybe it's just cleaning your house. Because those things I'm learning through time, those little things are actual things that make you, good, that help you to get to the next level. Because you're taking time for you. It all starts with, with you. So maybe there's, you know, people that you can start reaching out to, things that you can start doing that really, you know, help you. If you, if there's someone who you admire that, that is successful, that you're like, I, how do I get to where you are? Ask them. One of my favorite stories about, um, my, my friend Trish and business partner now is, uh, let's see, how long ago was it? 10 years ago. <laughs> 10 years ago, I um, started, started uh, my job at IHG, and I don't do really well in corporate America, and I already knew this, um, and desk, desk jobs are really hard for me, but when I met her, she came into my training class, and all the, all the leaders came in, and, and you know the managers and all that stuff, and were introducing themselves. They all came in, and she told us what she did. And at that time, she was the um, training, she was a, a coach, co master coach is what it was called. And she came in and she told us what she did. So basically, she coached the coaches and the managers uh, to, to be, you know, better. She, she gave trainings and, and things like that to, to increase their, their skills after they were, after they were managers. And I was like, oh, and she did a lot of, she talked a lot about leadership stuff. And I'm very, 
very passionate about leadership. And I didn't realize how passionate I was until after I met her. And we really, I was able to do a lot of work with her to be able to do that. Um, so, so I emailed Trish as soon as she left. And she said that in the many years that she was a coach, I was the only person who reached out and was like, how do I get to where you are? And that for me was a first step. And within four months, I was a manager and I stayed a manager for the six years. We ended up getting laid off. But what I was able to do during that time is I was able to connect with, with Trish and learn and help with leadership development and help all these things. And now we are doing our own business for that. It took us that long to get to this level. But each step along the way was something that we put into the energy of one day we're going to be doing this. And now today is the day that we're doing this. <laughs> and it's so cool to think about our, our past and our journey. And, and, you know, you can always look back and be like, oh, well, if I would have only done this five years ago, or if I would have only done, if that's something that you're asking yourself and you wish that you would have done, definitely start today because five more years down the road, you're going to be saying, man, if I only would have started again after doing that. Instead of looking back and saying, I wish I did this, start by saying, I'm so grateful that I'm here. And this is why. Write that down. I guarantee you, if you write down all the things that you've accomplished, focus on that. Write those things down and you're going to have a list of this big of things that you've done. If it's as a mom, if it's in a relationship, if, I mean, even if you've gone through a lot of things, what have you done that you're grateful for? I promise you, as hard as it might seem to find gratitude, you can do it because that's what's so important. And that's the thing that I am so proud to say that I am able to do it with, with my friend now. And our program that we're developing is that program to help you get to that next level is, and, and we are on a path to help other people succeed, to set people up for success. And we're doing it as we go as well. Like we're setting ourselves up for success every time we're able to remind each other because we get frustrated. We are perfectly imperfect people. And we have those moments of limiting beliefs and of doubt and of, of regret and of all the things that make us frustrated. But we also have all the things that we can remind ourselves of and each other of, of why we should be excited. And I just thank you guys so much for, for being here and for watching this and, and for, for taking those steps towards your own greatness, because we all have a mission in this life. We all have a purpose in this life. Sometimes it's hard to find, or sometimes it's hard to remember what that is. It starts by taking those little steps to do something for you, to invest in something for you. So thank you guys for investing in yourselves. Thank you for being, being here, supporting anybody who you're supporting for your children, for your friends, for your family, for your your grandparents, for whoever it is that need your support right now, thank you. And thank yourself. And look in your, the mirror and tell yourself, thank you. Because you're worth that. You're worth that love. You're worth that hope. You're worth putting those steps into place to having your own success. We'll see you next week. <laughs>